As soon as you open up your fresh new Macintosh, you're just boom, straight back where you left off. There's no spinning around. All the apps are in their places, everything's exactly where it was the day before. It's like that person who wakes up from the first alarm in the morning. Windows has gotten better at this over time, but they're still not quite there. However, when you look down at the Mac's keyboard, there are so many modifier keys and in one app, pressing option command does one thing and then on the other app, it's control command that does that thing. It's just confusing for a new user or someone switching from Windows, whereas Windows have two. Control and Alt. Very simple. One doesn't work, you try the other and it works. On Mac, it's a nightmare. You try Option, Control, Command, Option, Command, Command, Control, Option, Control, Command, and you end up googling the shortcut anyway. But then if you manage to randomly hit those keys just right and land on Command Shift 5, you see that, oh, you can record your Mac's screen by default. It's built in. Now when your grandma needs an explanation on how to do something, you can just Show her. On Windows, this is a nightmare. You have to download and learn third-party software to record your screen, and even then, it doesn't work half the time. Speaking of the screen, Macs have a glossy finish without any matte coating that disperses light, and most Windows laptops usually have a matte coating on the screen. I don't know if this is a plus or minus, I just threw it in here. But what Windows has going for it is better management of multiple instances of the same app. If you you have two Chrome windows open on Windows, you just see it in your taskbar, but on Mac, oh boy. If you lose that other window, you better be sure that you'll be searching for it for the rest of your life. And on Windows, you can switch between them with Alt Tab, but on Mac, no no, you have to learn bonus shortcuts to switch between windows from the same app and press Command plus tilde instead. But the good news is, those browser windows on Mac can be from any browser that you want and you don't have to battle your way to install it, whereas Windows nicely recommends you use their browser. They make it only slightly difficult to switch your default browser, not to mention the hundred pre-installed applications from companies that paid Microsoft to be put on Windows. That's where paying the Apple tax for a more expensive machine pays its dividends. But on the application front, you can't really argue with Windows because they support Support everything. You can download and install anything from anywhere and most Windows utilities are free and open source, whereas on Mac you have to pay for every little app and feature, even worse, some of them are subscription based. But where Macs get their competitive edge… <clears throat> Our virtual desktop. They seem to be much more useful on a Mac. Maybe because of the lack of window management abilities, so you're kind of forced to use them. But nevertheless, they feel much more smoother and integrated into the OS compared to Windows, especially with mission control. Maybe it's the smoother animations that attract my eye, but there's definitely something there. What's not there is gaming. The only game that works properly on Mac that I play on Steam is Binding of Isaac, so that's that. On Windows, well, you can game. But apart from the CPU, RAM, and GPU, what matters in a game is good hardware, and Macs have such good microphones and speakers. In fact, right now I'm recording this voiceover on just a built-in MacBook microphone. Let me know how it sounds in the comments, which are right below the like button. The speakers on a Mac are just incomparable to anything that's out there on the Windows side. For that matter, Macs have excellent build quality too. They feel like sturdy, well-made machines, not just plastic boxes with a motherboard inside. What makes Windows stand out though is the customization options. There are so many communities and enthusiasts dedicated to making Windows look different, often similar to Mac. <clears throat> I often download cursor packs, complete overhauls, folder icons, and etc. This ties down to many third-party app support too, like Rainmeter or Wallpaper Engine, that can make Windows look incredible. What doesn't look incredible on Windows are fonts. This is my personal preference, but look, the fonts on Mac look so much better. The text is just sharper and sort of smoother at the same time. In fact, I even made a dedicated video to this 
this, explaining more in depth why fonts look better on Mac compared to Windows. I link to it in the description. Now, even though Macs have great built in hardware, Windows wins with external hardware support. Oh god, where do I begin with this? Have you ever tried connecting a non Apple mouse to an Apple computer? It's crazy. There's annoying mouse acceleration, which I can only disable through the terminal. The scroll wheel scrolls the page up when I scroll down. It's just a mess. I had to install like three separate apps to make my mouse work just like any other mouse on a Windows PC. Now on the other hand, if you have an Apple accessory or an iPhone, then Macs have such great integration. There's copying on one device and instantly pasting what you copied on the other. There's AirDrop, which is a major lifesaver. There's iMessage, Handoff, iCloud, and so many cool integrations if you have an iPhone and a Mac that Windows doesn't even come close to having with any phone. What Windows do have is a proper X button that closes apps. On Mac, if you press X, instead of closing the app, it only closes a window of that app, but it still leaves that app running in the background, even though there are no more windows of that application left. Again, you have to learn a shortcut for this, and it's Command plus Q to fully quit an app on Mac. But with a Mac, you don't really need anything other than the Mac itself for it to be a good laptop. Whereas with Windows laptops, you can deal with them for a while, but usually at least an external mouse gets connected later. You see, MacBooks have the best trackpad, not only because the haptics feel so good, but also the gestures. They're so well thought out for navigating the OS. In fact, I made a whole video about trackpad gestures, and it's also in the description. Even though the trackpad is superior on Mac, the Windows navigation isn't. On Windows, it's just so easy to place program windows wherever you want. With Windows, it's so quick to move things around, jump between task to task, see two things or apps at once, but on Mac, it's just not the same. Either you have to install third-party apps to make it easier, but even then, there's still something missing. What's also missing is the loud fan noises. I've never heard my Mac's fans spin up loud, or spin up at all, actually. Some of Apple's computers don't even have fans, whereas opening a Windows laptop immediately boosts up the ambient hissing noise by 10 decibels. But when talking about screens, you'll notice that Mac people prefer one instead of two or three monitors. But why? It's definitely not because they lack money. You see, the way Macs handle multiple external monitors is quite a nightmare. The dock stays on only one of them, apps won't open on the monitor where they were minimized. Simply put it, it's just easier to use virtual desktops on a Mac and use multiple monitors on Windows because Windows handle them in such a user-friendly way. What Macs handle better though is battery. If you have a relatively new Mac with their M series chip, then you'll probably not have to worry that much about charging it every few hours. It's crazy how well this OS conserves energy even when using apps like Google Chrome. Now where Windows stands out is that they show you things, whereas Macs work more in the background. On Mac, it's common for a random thing to pop up with a progress bar and then quickly disappear because Mac OS does something in the background. This makes it a lot harder to know which programs are open in the background on Mac since sometimes they don't even show up in the dock or menu bar. Macs don't even show you file transfer speeds when transferring things. But on Windows, things are more transparent, easier to find. Windows shows you things that it's doing. It's not so locked down, except when you want to uninstall Edge. Now, of course, each of these operating systems have their own pros and cons, but the thing that moves them closer together are custom apps. They can bring features over from one OS to the other, and this is where it gets real fun. So if you want to make your Mac 10 times easier to use, here's a video with the best apps that make Mac OS more like Windows in a good way. And there are definitely 20 more things that I wasn't able to fit into this one video. So let me know if you'd like a part two.